This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Only two more weeks of EPL action left for this year, and a lot of things at the top of the table have been decided, but still potentially some jockeying towards the bottom of the table and plenty of matches to discuss. We're going to talk about those for today for Match Week 37 by talking to Austin Cass, and then I'll dive in to some MLB bets for today across FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Joined here, as mentioned, by Austin Cass. You can find him on Twitter at Austin Cass. You can find his work, including EPL betting guides, over at numberfire.com. Austin, only two weeks left in the EPL season. So uh it has the has the sadness set in for you yet that the season is almost done. Yeah, it has. I was just thinking the other day that because of COVID and how they rescheduled the World Cup, there really hasn't been a break in soccer. Like there will yeah. be this summer for a while, but there's the women's world cup. So We'll have that, but yeah, it's, I'm sad that the season's ending. Yeah. And it seems like it's ending with still some stuff left to be decided, but of course your Man City ticket looking pretty good. Uh, We discussed that, I believe in your first appearance here, how you thought they were undervalued. That's going to coast at this point, which is a good thing, but still some interesting stuff left to be decided. We're going to talk to Austin about uh, match week 37, get his read there, and also break down some baseball later on. First, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We are here every weekday breaking down MLB, EPL, PGA, UFC, NASCAR, whatever it may be, you can find it all right here every weekday and also over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up over on the FanDuel YouTube page or leave us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. Now, Austin, we talked about Man City, and they've basically wrapped up the top of the table. But there are still some things left to be decided here, so let's take a look at the futures market first before we dive in to the matches this weekend. Anything for you that stands out as being a value right now in either the re- relegation or to avoid relegation markets at FanDuel Sportsbook, or do you think those markets are pretty efficiently priced? I think they're pretty efficiently priced. Um, as you have alluded to, they're, you know most everything has kind of been decided. Doesn't mean there won't be another twist, but at this point, Southampton are already relegated for sure, and then Leicester and Leeds, it's it's really looking like they're going to have a tough time staying up. So I don't really see much there. If if there's anything in any futures market, it would be um, for Liverpool to possibly make the top four. That was something that I could maybe talk myself into. But yeah, top four finish there. Um, they're plus 230, but Newcastle played Brighton yesterday. And Newcastle won that game. If Newcastle had drawn or lost i kind of thought that maybe i could talk myself into liverpool there but now it's looking like they'll have to pass manchester united who um uh, you know plays bournemouth chelsea and fulham the last three games and i'm not i'm not sure liverpool is going to be able to do it even if they went out so yeah i'm just not seeing much in the futures market and again, as we always say here on the show, a no bet is better than a losing bet. So always better to acknowledge an efficient market and you know avoid making a bad bet there. So it sounds like Austin views this, this market as being efficient. And the consolation prize, Austin, is that we got a lot of matches coming up this weekend, Saturday through Monday. We got matches all three days. Let's start things off with the more traditional markets for those matches. Anything stand out to you across those? Yeah, so I've got something I like on each day. So for Saturday, I like in the Wolves-Everton match, um, I like Wolves to go over one and a half goals, and it's actually priced at uh, plus 164. Um, (laughs) It's plus 164 because Wolves have been awful uh, at scoring goals, so I know that's not what you want to hear at the start of this. (laughs) But uh, Everton have been one of the worst defensive teams, so something's got to give. It's pretty much the worst attacking team against maybe the worst defensive team. Uh, Everton have allowed the most goals in the league, uh, most expected goals, sorry, according to FB refs expected goal model. Uh, Sean Dyche, who is a somewhat new manager for him, has a reputation of a defensive guy, but it hasn't really panned out. He hasn't been able to fix the problems. Um, and it's not just big teams that have given Everton problems, which is something that bodes well for Wolves. Uh, Everton have allowed at least two goals to 
Nottingham Forest, Fulham, West Ham, Leicester, Villa, and Southampton just in the second half of the season. And on the road, Everton have allowed the most XG in the league, 37.5 in 17 matches. And in their last nine away matches, they've conceded 20.7 XG. So, uh, yeah, it's mostly this is a bet against Everton's defense and not as much on Wolves' attack. But Wolves are uh, do have a Pedro Neto back. He's one of their better attacking players, so that helps. Um, that's a lift for them. But, yeah, I'm bullish on them. Wolves do the matchup, and the plus 164 is, you know, an enticing reward for this bet. Now, when you look at the Wolves' offense, what gives you faith they can kind of buck that trend? Is it entirely just the matchup here with Everton? Is it just focused on the Everton defense? Or have you seen signs of life, maybe signs of due for positive regression via ex- expected goals, stuff like that? What on the Wolves' side of thing draws you in here? Yeah, I would say probably 80 to 85% of it is the matchup <laughs> and that Wolves are at home. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, they played earlier this year, and Wolves scored twice in that one. That was at Everton. Neto coming back, he's a really good player. Uh, he's someone who I thought maybe a couple of years ago was going to end up at a pretty big club, and he's just struggled with injuries. Hasn't happened for him yet. But him coming back is a big lift. And, yeah, so it, it is mostly about Everton and Wolves being at home. Okay, so Wolves over one and a half goals, plus 164 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Wolves versus Everton matchup. That is in the goals market over at FanDuel Sportsbook. What else do you see in the more traditional markets for this weekend, Austin? Uh, For Sunday, the Southampton at Brighton match. Um, This is just a really interesting match for me. I think that Southampton might just get really slaughtered in this one. So they're mathematically relegated. So they've got two matches left, and it's really – they're a total wild card. So Mm -hmm. it's hard to know what type of team they're going to put out there, how strong of lineup. Maybe they'll play some young guys eye on next year. But even if they play their best lineup, they're in a lot of trouble against Brighton. So I want exposure to Brighton, and I think the best way to do that is Brighton over two and a half goals, which is minus 106. Um, Brighton, just simply put, they're one of the best attacking teams in the league. Um, we have seen them kind of break the will of some of the better teams in the league. And they just did it to Arsenal last weekend in a 3-0 win at Arsenal, which effectively ended Arsenal's title hopes. So if if Brighton are passing it around Southampton and Southampton already don't have anything to play for, really, and I don't know how much fight they're going to have, which you know is kind of heading down a narrative path that I don't really like going down usually, but... Um, yeah, it's just a really lopsided game. Brighton have their last four home matches, 13.0 expected goals, and that includes 6.5 uh, over two matches against Manchester United and Brentford, two teams in the top half of the table. So it's one of the best attacking sides at home against one of the worst teams in the league that has nothing to play for and just sealed their relegation fate last weekend. So, yeah, I'm back in Brighton to score at least three. But, oh, I wanted to mention, sorry, um, since Brighton just played yesterday on Thursday, before I place this bet, I want to see I want to see their starting lineup mm-hmm. uh, just to make sure they don't rotate too much. But as long as they put a strong lineup out there, then I'm, I'm firing away. So hold off on the Brighton bet until you see the lineup coming out on Saturday, which should be about – or on Sunday, I should say, which should be – and luckily it's a couple of days extra between matches, so it's not uh, yeah. directly after that Thursday match for Brighton. Over two and a half goals. It's now minus 111. Is that still okay with you? I think it was 106 earlier on. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's – that's really uh, – it's, it's really – it says a lot that it's even minus 111 because it's right. normally only teams like Man City – and Liverpool in the league who would have a number that big to score three goals or a number that low, I'm sorry, to score three goals. So yeah, odd makers are expecting this to be pretty ugly too, I think. Now I generally know how to like handle like late season NFL stuff when teams have been eliminated, but like EPL is a different beast where you actually get relegated and stuff like that. In your experience, when a team like Southampton is, is in this spot, this true, true, true lame duck spot is it like full rollover uh, at that situation? Like you said, maybe play some young guys because just a different beast for me than looking at NFL stuff. Yeah, it's a great question and it varies. Mm-hmm. There's been times actually where teams have been relegated and actually played 
okay the last, like pretty well better than they yeah. have been like the pressure's off they've got nothing to lose now and uh but i mean southampton have given up 25 goals in the last 10 games and that was when they were fighting for their lives so i just don't know that they're going to have anything in the tank right they were playing full out then. They're no longer playing full out. Uh, so Brighton over two and a half goals, minus 111 at FanDuel Sportsbook for Brighton versus Southampton. Now, you mentioned you've got a bet uh, for all three days. We have not discussed Monday yet. So looking at the uh, Monday match, I believe there's just the one. Yeah, Newcastle and Leicester. What are you seeing in that one, Austin? Um, I like Alexander Isaac to score or assist. I think we have gone to Isaac a few times this year. He's a player I really like, and I always kind of like his odds. Um, sorry, it's just a goal. It's anytime goal. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, minus 200 to score assists, but it's just anytime goal odds for Isaac. Um, yeah, minus 105 there. There you go. I was getting nervous when I didn't see it on there. But, uh, <laughs> minus 200? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I was like, holy cow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's not even not even messy would be that. So right. Uh, yeah, I think so. Le- Leicester are in an interesting case because they're still alive, and a win would be massive for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but Newcastle are just much much better, and Newcastle also have a lot to play for because they're looking to seal a spot in next year's Champions League, which they can do by getting in the top four. And a win basically locks that up for them. So even though Leicester have a lot to play for, Newcastle really have a lot to play for as well. And I just, Newcastle, St. James Park, their home stadiums become one of the toughest places to play in the league this year. They've been fantastic at home. And I just think they're going to create a lot of chances and Isaac's going to have a really good chance to be on the end of one of those and put one in the goal. So it sounds like this is a convergence of a lot of things where it is a good team facing a bad team where both teams are still going to try very hard. So you can analyze it straight up. And Isak is a guy, I believe when we talked about him is his goals odds this year, have typically been like 105 plus 105 or so. So minus 105 is not that big of a difference in a very good, what you would think would be a very good matchup. It sounds like it just kind of checks all the key boxes you want here. Yeah, it does. The only box it doesn't check is that if Callum Wilson plays and is in the starting lineup, Wilson will take penalties over Isaac, okay. which is the only bummer. But that's baked into the price. If if Wilson's not in the starting lineup, the Isaac member is going to fall to like minus one fifteen probably by kickoff. Okay. Well, then check out Isak at minus 105 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook to score. So to recap, the three bets Austin likes across this weekend in the EPL. He likes Wolves over one and a half goals, or plus 164. Brighton over two and a half goals, minus 111. But see what the lineup looks like uh, before you decide to lock that one in. Then Alexander Isak on Monday to score, minus 105 for that Newcastle versus Leicester game. Austin, that's all we got here for today. Still, we do have next week uh, in the EPL where they have all teams playing at the exact same time. That's going to be a fun one to discuss. I'm looking forward to that. But for now, I appreciate the time. Thank you as always. Good luck to you with your bets, and we'll talk to you here once again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Jim. All righty, check out Austin on Twitter, at Austin Casting. Again, you can find his EPL betting guide over at numberfire.com if you want to read it in written form as well. We're going to dig into some MLB for today and uh, let you know some money lines, strikeout props, and more that I like here in just one second. But first, the second leg of Horse Racing's Big 3 is here, and FanDuel is the best place to bet the Preakness Stakes. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20. That means you'll get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. Bet the Preakness with America's number one sportsbook. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20 this Saturday. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first win wager. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12, 2023. Refund issued in non-withdrawable... Oh, just read that. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Let's talk now about some MLB for today. Full 15 games for tonight in Major League Baseball. I've got some money lines and strikeout props that I like. Could not find a home run prop that I like, but let's talk about those money lines. There are three separate teams, or I guess now two, two separate teams that I have as should be favorites, but are not currently favored over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's with the two that are still 
still qualify for that. Beginning with the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, Cardinals in this game plus 110. We were on the Cardinals last night as well, and they made it a little bit sweaty towards the end, but then put up like 16 runs in the ninth inning to win at that game. I think they can go back to back and win once again here today. My my numbers have the Cardinals at 50.8% to win. Their implied odds here, 47.6%. And that's even with my numbers not being overly high on Steven Matz uh, for the Cardinals, their starter, or I'm not really skeptical of Tony Gonsolin either. I think I'm actually kind of high on Gonsolin. So when I have a situation like that, where I know I might be either in line with the market or potentially even higher than the market on a starting pitcher, and I'm still showing value on the opposing team, that tells me I can feel pretty good about this bet. The Cardinals offense has started to click here, not just uh, in the eighth inning last night, but um, beyond that, the past couple weeks, this offense has been resurgent. They have a solid bullpen, despite a late collapse, almost collapse last night, and defense here is above average. I do think the Dodgers baseline numbers against lefties are something a bit short. And you do see that here uh, with the matchup against Mats. They're hitting for power against lefties. I think their long-term numbers against lefties will be better. So it's possible my numbers are a hair or two low on the Dodgers here, but with the gap between my numbers and the implied odds at uh, three percentage points, it's big enough where we've got some wiggle room to be a bit too low on the Dodgers and still have this as being a value. So to me, I think this makes a lot of sense. I do like the Cardinals here, plus 110. I think they can win a second consecutive game against the Dodgers for tonight. Second money line where I'm showing value here is the Angels against the Twins. The Angels money line, plus 108. Reed Detmers against Joe Ryan. I do like the Angels here, plus 108 in this game. And I think it's a couple things that play here. The first part is pumping the brakes a bit on Joe Ryan while also acknowledging that Reed Detmers is better than the results he has gotten so far. Detmers is a guy, he's getting strikeouts right now. He should keep on doing so against the Twins. Twins have really struggled against lefties so far this year. It is a small sample, but they've got a lot of lefties in that lineup in general too. So I don't think that's totally, totally fluky. So Detmers, his ERA, I think, is worse than it should be right now. Should see some progression there and add on a good matchup there. I think that that's why we can have faith in Detmers. As for Ryan, I think that he is legit as far as being like a top tier pitcher, but he's not perfect. He's not checking every single box because the bad at ball data against Ryan is a bit underwhelming, I would say. So there is room for Ryan's ERA. To come back to earth a bit while still being very good. As a result of that, my model puts the Angels win odds at 51.8%. Their implied odds here, 48.1%. So decent little gap there, putting me on the Angels in this spot. So the two still plus money, money lines that I like at FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, the Angels at plus 110, Angels at plus 108, and the Cardinals at uh, plus 110 against the Dodgers. The one I liked earlier on this morning, which has moved since then, the downsides for recording at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning as opposed to the typical 9 o'clock. The Nationals were plus 102 this morning. They are now minus 108 against the Detroit Tigers. That puts their implied win odds at 51.9%. I do still have them above that at 52.3%, but the edge there is effectively gone. So what I would do here is shop around and see if you can still get the Nationals at... I would say like minus 102 or better. If you can get them at minus 102, their implied odds are 50.5%. That to me would be enough to justify betting them. If it's just minus 108, if you can just get the FanDuel Sportsbook number, I'd be okay backing off this one. But if you can still get the Nationals at minus 102 or longer, I do think they make a lot of sense here. Uh, This offense... He's pretty bad, but they're better against lefties just because they put the ball in play a ton. Jake Irvin has been okay in his first three starts, exceeding expectations. The Tigers' bullpen is better than the Nationals for sure, and I think that's the one thing that does favor the uh, Tigers pretty heavily, but I still think there is some potential value in the Nationals here. So shop around on that money line to see if you can get it at minus 102 or longer. If it's minus 108, I'd back off because I think that is pretty efficient and very much in line with where my numbers have it. Now, with that said, that would not mean you'd have to dump this entire game entirely. There are other ways to bet into this game and bet against uh, the Tigers for tonight. For me, that would be taking the under on Matt Boyd's strikeout prop. Four and a half strikeouts, minus 108 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that is a a good number to grab as of right now. Uh, Boyd 
it comes down to a couple of things. The first thing is that he has not been a very high strikeout guy so far this year. He has gone over this number in two of his past four starts. So that could imply maybe I'm a bit, you know, lower on him than I should be. But his strikeout rate overall this year, 19.9%. He's facing the Nationals. As I mentioned before, their team puts the ball in play a bunch against lefties. Their active roster has a 17.2% strikeout rate against lefties so far this year. So although Boyd has gotten more strikeouts recently, one of those games is against the, the Brewers who never saw a, you know, a lefty they wouldn't whiff against. Um, and he's now facing a very low strikeout team on the road. And I think there's potentially some value in the opposing team to win this game. That aligns to me to say Matt Boyd under four and a half strikeouts minus 108 is the better way if you want to effectively bet against the Tigers here. I think that between this and the money line, they're both minus 108 right now. I prefer this one for sure. So I would take Matt Boyd under four and a half strikeouts, minus 108 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The second strikeout prop where I'm showing value for today is Yusei Kikuchi, at least as of this morning, and it is still right there. Okay, so Kikuchi under five and a half strikeouts, minus 112 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. And we talked about this when we were discussing strikeout props yesterday, but I prefer props where there are multiple paths to the bet hitting. And I think there are two paths here with a Kikuchi under five and a half. The first one is he could just go under this like naturally because he's facing the Orioles. They have a 20.7% strikeout rate on the current active roster against lefties. That's a below average number, which means just in general, lower strikeout matchup. Kikuchi for the full year, his strikeout rate 22.9%. I think he's sacrificing some strikeouts in order to try to suppress the balls and play against him. And based on what happened last year, I think that's a good endeavor to go for, but it's not going to help his strikeout prop at 22.9%. So that's one row. Kikuchi just goes under five and a half pretty organically. He has had, I think, uh, six plus strikeouts, four times in eight starts. He's gone over it half the time. Probably why this number is here, but that is a realistic path. The second realistic path to me is that Kikuchi is still rough, bad at ball numbers, could come back to bite him. And I mentioned before, he may be trading in strikeouts to try to improve his bat at ball data. That has not worked yet because he's still letting up, I believe, a 48% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate. When you put that up against a an Orioles offense that has a 126 WRC plus against lefties and puts the ball in the air a lot and hits her power, that can get you in danger pretty quickly, especially at a park that has been pretty homer friendly uh, since the renovations they made this offseason. So... He could get yanked early if the Orioles knock him around, or he could go under this pretty organically. That, to me, is two decently realistic paths to an under on Kikuchi. Once you account for those paths, my model is Kikuchi projected for 4.9 strikeouts. He'd need to get six to get the over here, so I feel pretty good in taking the under on Kikuchi. Under 5.5 strikeouts, minus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So the two strikeout props, Kikuchi under uh, 5.5, minus 112. Matthew Boyd under 4.5 strikeouts, minus 108. The two money lines I still like are the Cardinals plus 110, Angels plus 108. And then if you can get the Nationals at minus 102 or uh, longer, I think they would make sense there as well. That is all that we have here for today and this week on Covering the Spread. Fun week with talking with all of you. As always, next week is a big one because we've got uh, the Indianapolis 500. We'll be talking about that. Coca-Cola 600, Monaco, assuming that there's no rain in Monaco. Unfortunately, the uh, Formula One race this weekend getting rained out via some awful downpours in Italy. So hopefully everything's okay there. Hopefully we can get some racing in next week. All that coming up here on the show next week in addition to the typical stuff with PGA, MLB, et cetera, et cetera. Big thank you once again to Austin Cast. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Austin Cast and find his work over at numberfire.com. Thank you to Austin as always. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Do not forget to subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or give us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today and this week. Good luck to you with your bets today and enjoy uh, the Preakness. Enjoy PGA Championship, tonight's MLB slate, EPL, whatever it may be. Good luck to you. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>